So ChatGPT uh, is based off of the OpenAI model that's just been released. And I wanted to see if we could do three tasks for Unity and try to increment the difficulty or the nicheness or nicheness of it. Um, so this is, the, this is the chatbot just now, and I know it can generate some code in different languages, but I don't know if it does it for Unity. So I want to see this and to kind of do like a live reaction. Uh, so we're going to ask it to generate a Unity C Sharp script that creates 10 by 10 volume. So we're expecting a 10 by 10 volume in vector coordinates generating these cubes. Uh, we'll see if it does it randomly positions. I didn't specify that. Uh, so prefab plus the gap, which is one. And then we're going to instantiate it in the second loop. Oh no, the network error. How disappointing. Let's try that again. It's added an extra dimension. Okay. Uh, let's copy, and then the network error, but I copied it. Okay. So it's not all bad. Let's, uh, I just called the class script. Okay, we can get rid of that as well. Oops. Uh, so it does have a cube prefab cube holder equals new game object cube holder. Right, okay, so it's going to instantiate a game object called cube holder and go XYZ. Let's, uh, we've saved that. Let's add this to here and we'll also create a cube prefab. So we'll just create our cube and we'll just default it as a prefab here. Um, We'll leave that. Let's turn the grid off as well. Let's snap this there because it doesn't need to be there. So let's drag our prefab here and run. I believe it starts on start. It does. It does it on start. So in our game view, we can see that it has went and done it. It's generated 10 by 10 under here. Now, you know, to visualize this a little better, actually, why don't we just create a plane? Uh, we should see that they fall. Um, so, well, you can see the plane was a little too small there, but you know, uh, that was pretty quick really, wasn't it? To, to create a script like that. It's quite good. Huh. Well, that's quite entertaining. Uh, uh, that was quite fun actually. Like, uh, I've, I've generated a script like this before, but, um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was that implementation. But anyway, there's the first one. We're generating uh, cubes in a volume. Generate a Unity C Sharp script. Controlling a game object in C Sharp, right? Let's have a look. It's, if I copy the code now and paste it, by the way, it doesn't actually do anything. Like it does just show what's been printed. So it is kind of writing it in real time. So it's using the input get axis horizontal vertical from the legacy input system. Um, interestingly enough, if I search for this, I would like to copy the code prior actually. So what one's this doing? Movement controller. Let's create this script just now. Okay, let's open this up and let's paste this bad boy. It's actually already got everything in it. So what we're doing here, X, Y, Z, horizontal, apply the input. <coughs> it doesn't actually have, oh, it does have a speed variable as well. So then using direction to speed time, delta time each frame. It's been applied to the update function. Poof, pretty great, honestly. Uh, I don't have a controller plugged in. I lied, I do. Let's see if it automatically defaults to it with this system. Um, it's just adding a movement controller here. We've set speed to five, but we need to apply this to one of our cubes. So what we're gonna do is add our cube here, make this plane a little bigger. Um, let's just create a material just so we have like a, a shade of something a little bit different. Let's just go for like a gray. And we'll apply that to the floor just so we can see everything a bit better. So here's our cube and we're going to um, not use gravity. And we're going to assign our movement controller script to it. And if we go, we'll see what happens. I do have a controller plugged in, but oh, it has, it has detected it. Nice, it did work. That worked pretty quickly, actually. Um, so let's just go to our cube, select our main camera and kind of align it just somewhere like, ba, 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 ba. let's just say that for now. Uh, that's good enough for us. And we're just gonna make a child of the cube. 
so then when the game starts we can just follow around so we just have a playstation 5 controller here and you can see now we're able to walk around the environment uh obviously it doesn't have rotation and obviously we have a rigid body so it's going to collide and it's going to freak out uh, it's only if we were to actually enable gravity on the cube it would probably have a little bit more effects okay so there we go it still works uh so cool well it does movement uh, in the most basic form and if we were to actually google uh this question let's see what happens in the top results what's the script it gives us not the same script but using get access well that's not using that one Oh, well, this is the... Okay, cool. Uh, realistically, this is the perfect one. And uh, this was maybe the second click. So rather than call it, it's called it direction rather than movement, but this is the same, this is the same script. So, cool, you know, would that have saved us time? I don't know, we just found it there with the third one. So let's uh, try one more. So we've done generation and we've done this. Uh, Generate a Unity script that will, a Unity C Sharp script that will produce the Mandel rot set. This is super hard. Well, I would be surprised. Oh, wow. It's going to generate to a texture. Oh wow, this is this is actually really cool. Or an object. Yo, this is insane. It's actually doing it. And it's No! I'm going to redo that. So I've just restarted it and it's doing it in a different approach. Okay, we're trying again. I've just added the keyword texture because it would be good if it just directly generates it to a texture and then we can actually print it as a raw. I wonder if every time I'm running it, we're getting a different result. And I'm just curious if it's anyone else has asked this question and if it has some sort of reinforcement learning into it, even though the network failed, I wonder if it's like using its previous code to iterate on for the next. Damn. So I'm actually just reading here and it says we trained this model using reinforcement learning from human feedback, real life human feedback or, or reinforcement learning. But uh, I don't know why I call it real life human feedback. Um, but I wonder if, I wonder if everyone can have like questions that are so unique that it trains the model via reinforcement learning. Well, I guess, unfortunately, we're not going to find out the answer to that one. So I'm just going to say, so if we can produce something like Perlin noise, you could use this to maybe have level generation. Okay. So it's just going to loop through the colors and apply brilliant, super easy piece of piss. Let's do it. This here. Get component renderer, render.material.main texture equals texture. Cool, so we're applying it and we're assigning it to there at the start. So, uh, the actual render texture isn't needed. So, you know, it's just going to apply it to the default shader here. It doesn't know about that. So when we press start, we have a game where cubes fall down. You can move around and we have a randomly generated artwork in the background. So that's quite cool, to be honest. Uh, the Obviously, that is just completely noise, but... It's quite cool in itself, right? Um, you know, this is a uh, first game I've ever made using exclusively AI code. Obviously, I tweaked that little bit there, but let's be real. Yeah. Okay, I hope that was interesting, and I hope that the network scaling is supported more so we can try more advanced concepts.